The upcoming release of Windows 7 has many people excited, and they're looking forward to a much needed change from Vista. In fact, in one survey, almost 66% of American and European IT firms will be going for the upgrade. And within a year, 51% of consumers also plan on switching to version 7. Since so many people are planning to upgrade, I've compiled five tips on what to do before the major switch. First things first, it's important to figure out if your computer can handle the new software. For Windows 7 32-bit, you'll need a minimum of 1 GHz 32-bit processor, 1 GB of RAM, 16 GB of available hard drive space. For the 64-bit version, you'll need a 1 GHz 64-bit processor, 2 GB of RAM, and 20 GB of available hard drive space. Both versions require a DirectX 9 compatible graphics device with Windows Display Driver Model 1.0 or higher. My second, and perhaps most essential tip before installing Windows 7, is to back up your valuable data such as photos, music, or anything else of consequence. As long as you're performing a basic upgrade from Vista to Windows 7, all of your important documents, images, and music ought to remain intact. But as a precaution, it's a good idea to make a backup. If you're upgrading from XP to Windows 7, however, then you'll definitely need a backup because a clean install is your only option. You can always back up your info online using free sites or software such as Dropio, Dropbox, and the industry standard Mosey, which offer free storage amounts. But if you have a lot of information, you'll probably need more space than what they offer. In that case, Microsoft Windows Server is a good option. If you're looking to back up your data without uploading everything online, you can use a USB flash drive or get more storage for the dollar by going with an external hard drive. They connect via USB, just like a flash drive, and come in many different varieties. Have an iPod? You can just put them into disk mode and store your data on there as well. It's compatible with every OS. And speaking of disk mode, there are many external hard drives for backing up your system. I prefer using the Drobo, but there are hundreds more that you can use. Tip number three. Once you've got all of your data backed up, you should look into known compatibility issues with Windows 7 and your software. For example, some users running Adobe Photoshop CS4 have reported errors when trying to install it in 7. But running the CS4 setup program in Windows Vista compatibility mode seems to solve the problem. On a side note, the Windows 7 driver model is exactly the same as Windows Vista, so if you have peripherals, like an external audio interface that worked for Vista, they should still work for Windows 7. But if you have hardware that stopped working when you upgraded from XP to Vista, chances are it still won't work with 7. For my fourth tip, make sure you're getting the least expensive version of Windows 7. Just like they did with XP and Vista, Microsoft is releasing six different versions. The Home Premium Upgrade retails for $119.99, Professional Upgrade goes for $199.99, and Windows 7 Ultimate Upgrade goes for $219.99. All three are also available in full versions for those of you who don't own a previous version of Windows, but they cost a bit more. If you already have Vista or XP, you won't gain any new features by purchasing the full install versus the upgrade, so don't pay more for something you don't need. Finally, I suggest doing the upgrade over the weekend. Performing a fresh install of Windows 7 on a high-end PC is only supposed to take about a half an hour, but if you're like most users, you probably have a mid-level PC with plenty of programs installed that the Windows 7 upgrade will migrate into the new OS. And this makes for an exceptionally long upgrade time. Up to 21 hours according to Crunchgear. So after all of that, look what I've got. Windows 7 running on my Mac using Boot Camp. I've downloaded a few applications and they're working pretty well. I hope the tips help and good luck!